Hello. So today I continue to go through games that I own that I have not played. Uh, Game of Thrones, The Iron Throne, I did an unboxing video of that um, just a couple days ago. But I've owned, I think this came out in 2016. I've only owned it a couple of years. I got it on a sale and just never got around to playing it. But I uh, set it up and did a a play solo playthrough of it yesterday and uh, I was just going to show you how that works, kind of how the game plays and give you my thoughts. It's by Fantasy Flight Games and it's based on the HBO um, series that's based on the books. So here I've got the game set up for the full five player game. So how do we do the setup? So first the players will choose one of the houses, either Stark, Baratheon, Tyrell, Targaryen, or Lannister, and then gather all of the components for that house. And that'll include the character tokens, you'll have uh, five for each house. And then uh, each house will have five leader sheets, with a different leader on each one of them. Take an influence board for your house and the five influence tokens. You'll have a deck of 25 house cards. So then once you've got all your components, each player will take their leader sheets, shuffle them together, you know, draw two, and then look at the two you drew and secretly choose one to be your leader chosen your leader everybody will reveal their leaders at the same time and once you have your leader you'll um, return the character token that matches your leader to the box it won't be used as one of your character tokens turn all unused leader sheets to the box then you'll shuffle your house cards and draw a hand of five cards put your leader sheet and your four remaining character tokens in your play area. You'll place your influence on your influence board as seen here. Each player will place four power tokens, that's what these crowns are. Place four power tokens on uh, each of their character tokens and four on their leader sheet. And so that's how I've got it set up for the five players here. Then you'll shuffle up the event deck. If, if you're not playing with the full five players, you'll take out the uh, house cards for the, player, the, for the houses that aren't going to be in the game. You'll t first take them out of the event deck and then shuffle up the remaining event cards and place it in the middle. And that's set up. Then you choose a, randomly choose a first player and start the game. Four phases to a turn, preparation, support, encounter, and resolution. And we'll see how that works. So on the first turn of the game, the player chosen as first player, which for me it's going to be uh, Rob Stark here in the House Stark. They will be known as the Challenger. And they will draw the top card of the event deck to see who the defender is. So he got Lannister, so the Starks will be the Challengers. The Lannisters will be the defenders, and if you, um, this text just basically says if you draw your own card like a Stark had drawn Stark, then you choose who your defender is. But anyway, for this turn, we've got Stark versus Lannister over here. So that, not that those are now your two active players. So the first thing, and you're still in the preparation phase. Each active player draws a card from their house deck and adds it to their hand. And they can each take one power token from their leader sheet and put it on one of their character tokens. So likely maybe who you want to use this turn. So we'll just put it on Arya there. And for the Lannisters, we'll uh, take it and put it on uh, Filthy Joffrey. So the challenger will decide uh, which one of their characters they want to take place in this encounter. 
So that may be determined by your cards. You may have a character that has a power you want to use. Um, but for right now, we'll just say, since he put that power on uh, Arya, so he's going to slide Arya forward a little bit. And since he's the challenger, you turn it so that the sword is facing up. And the defender will choose who they're, who's going to be their defender. And since I put that extra power on Joffrey, I'll slide him forward a little bit and turn him so that he's got the shield facing up. So that uh, signifies who your defender is. So that's the end of the preparation phase. Now you go to the support phase. Support phase starting to the left of the challenger, which to the left over here would be House Targaryen over here. They decide if they want to offer support to either the challenger or the defender. And um, if they want to, they can say they, they'll offer support, which will add strength or power of a character they decide to offer in support. They can say whether they want to offer support to the challenger, defender, and then the challenger or defender can say whether they accept or decline that support. And if they um, do accept it, then they move their character forward and to turn it toward the defender or challenger side, depending on which side they chose to support. So you go, you know, just around um, each faction. Not not the that's not the challenger. Or the defender says whether they want to offer support or not, and the challenger or defender decides whether they will accept their support or not. So that ends the support phase. Then you go to the encounter phase. And then that, that's when you're going to choose a card, which you're going to play to add to your strength. Um, now, if the as I said earlier, if the character you're, you've chosen to use this round for the encounter, like I chose Arya here, if you had a card with Arya's face on it, you could use its special power whenever um, it states. Like this one, uh, if I had chosen Bran, then after the resolution phase, I could play this card and do this power. But, but you can play a character card um, of any character, even if it's not the one that you chose um, your character token for. To play it, and it counts as a zero. You know, you know, this is a seven five. If I played her for this encounter, that would just be a zero. Or you can also use a character card that matches your leader um, for whatever its power is. Also, each leader uh, has a special power of their own, like Rob's power here is before your turn, discard three cards, then draw three cards. So each leader will have a, a different special power that comes into play in a different way. Anyway, during the encounter phase, you're trying to determine uh, what cards you want to play to get the most power to win this encounter. Now, there's also truce cards, which uh, House Stark doesn't have any right now, but if you can convince the player that you're um, going against during this encounter, maybe you just want to play a truce so neither one of you loses and you get uh, both get a reward of some sort but somebody can betray you they can say okay they're going to play a truce you play a truce card and they end up not playing a card you automatically lose you do get a little uh, bonus which I'll talk about in a minute if you're betrayed but you would lose the encounter so we'll just say we're going to go with hostility this time so we're trying to get uh, the highest card we have, so we're, we're going to play it 8. Now you play it face down. So let me gather my cards here, put it up there. Now uh, House Lannister over here, they're going to see what they have. See, there's a truce card. He could say he wants to play truce. He, didn't, he doesn't have a Joffrey. So since he had these cards, he may would have wanted to choose uh, Cersei or... Um, Jamie to use whatever their power is 
but he didn't right now, so he's going to look and say, well, I have a six or a three. Well, his special power is cunning, and it says before house cards are revealed, if you are the active an active player, the value of each revealed hostility card is negative. So that would work in his favor. Now he doesn't know what the other guys played, so he's going to try to play a low card because he's going to use his special power. Now the special power of a leader is always optional, so he doesn't have to use that every time. But because he doesn't have any high cards this time, maybe he would do that. So we'll say he's going to play a three. Now both players will reveal what they have and then you determine the winner now because of Tyrion's special power this is actually a negative eight so you would count you know the total number of power you have which she has five but minus eight that gives her a negative three where Joffrey had five but he only loses three so Lannisters have a power of two, so Lannisters actually would win this encounter. If the challenger wins, they get to spread an influence over to the defender's board. But if the defender wins, as happened in this case, they get to draw two cards into their hand and distribute two power from their leader sheet to you know, characters that they have. Also, if uh, other houses had supported one side or the other, if they'd supported the challenger and the challenger won, they would get to spread an influence also. Or if they'd supported the defender, like if House Targaryen had supported uh, House Lannister here as the defender, then they would also get to take two cards and, and uh, put two power onto their characters from the leader sheet. And this is considered a hostility outcome since nobody played a truce. So in that case the winner also gets to take a hostage from the losing side. And to take a hostage you can take uh, just draw a random card from their hand or take a card off the top of their deck or if they had some hostages themselves you could take one from one of the hostages they have. So, you know, just for this uh, instance, we'll just say that House Lannister takes the top card off their deck, and they get to look and see what it is. And they put it face down on their side in an area where they're going to keep hostages. Now, that's not all. All players on the losing side, which this is just how Stark lost in this round, but if they had had support um, and still lost, they would lose also. You lose half your influence rounded up. So since he's got five, he'll actually lose three influence. And when you lose that, it just goes... When you lose influence from a character token, it just goes on to your leader sheet. And usually if you lose influence from your leader sheet, it goes out of the game. Uh, in this case, we did a hostility outcome, but if, you know, in the discussion, if, you know, maybe Rob Stark did have a truce card and he said, hey, let's, let's do a truce, and both players did play a truce card, well, then the outcome's a little different. Here, during a truce outcome, the two active players enter, enter into a discussion, and each active player may bargain for one or more of the following, spreading an influence token taking up to two hostages, or removing up to three power from one active leader sheet and placing it on the other leader sheet. So they have to come to a, d a decision on if they want to do one or all of those, or one side gets all of those and the other doesn't. But anyway, that's uh, what happens if both players play a truce. And if there's a betrayal, the players you know, both agreed they were going to play a truce, but only one side played a truce and the other one actually played a hostility card. Then the side that played the hostility card wins, like I said, and gets the rewards as um, shown earlier. 
except that um, they don't get to take a hostage. Actually, the betrayed player actually gets to take a hostage from each player on the winning side. So after all penalties and rewards are done, that's the resolution phase, and then you go to the end of turn, and in that, you know, the characters are just returned to their normal positions. Uh, each side will draw, draw back up to five cards if they don't have it already. Um, any played cards will go into your discard pile. I'm kind of cramped for space here, so... Um, let's see this, he's got five cards, yep, so they don't, he wouldn't need to draw any, we'll just make this his discard pile, and that's it, and then you go to the next player, and they will draw a card to see who their defender will be, and you just keep going round and round like that, until one player has got all their influence, um, placed on other players boards and that player will first person to do that will be the winner or um, which I haven't talked about this when all power is removed from a character token then that character is dead and you flip it flip it over like that and if all four of one house's characters are dead then the game ends and whoever has the most influence spread to other houses is declared the winner. If it's a tie, then they share the victory. We we'll probably talk about hostages. You know, I showed how you gain a hostage, but not actually what good they're for. At the start of any turn, you can release a hostage by giving it back to, you know, the player whom it was taken from, and it just goes back into their hand. Um, or you can torment a hostage. So you may release hostages if, you know, one of the other players has some of yours and you've got some of theirs and you decide to just um, release them to each other or come to some other agreement. You can do a lot of bargaining in this game. So you, whatever agreement you want to come to. Um, but the other thing you can do is torment a hostage. So in this case, um, the hostage card he had is actually the leader. So if you torment the hostage and it's the leader, uh, you give the hostage back, it goes into their discard pile, the player's discard pile, but then you would remove four power from the leader sheet out of the game. So you would just take four power and it goes back to the box. If the hostage instead was just one of the characters of a player, um, one of their character tokens, then you remove four power from that character. So uh, in this case, if you remove four power from Bran, he's only got four power. That goes back on the leader sheet, not out of the game, but since he would, is now out of power, he would be dead. And instead, if you uh, are tormenting just a hostility card then you return the card to their discard pile and you just get to remove one power from one of their characters and place it back on the leader sheet so tormenting a hostility card is not nearly as good as having a character or leader so that's how the game works so next why don't I just go through maybe a round and just kind of show how maybe support works and how one round of the game goes and then I'll give you my thoughts. Alright, so let's go ahead and continue. Uh, I think I've got everything reset back where it was. I put uh, the hostage back here. So let's go on to House Baratheon's turn. Let's look at what his power is. After you draw an event card, if you are the challenger, you choose the defender's participating character. So that's pretty good power. Alright, so let's see who he's going to, he's going to challenge House Tyrell. So, so now each uh, active player, which is Baratheon and Tyrell, get to draw a card and then distribute one power. He'll put it on Davos. 
And old my Mace Tyrell, he's going to, let's just say, he's going to put it on Loris there. All right. All right, well, in uh, Baratheon's hand, uh, Shireen has this power. Before house cards are placed face down, distribute up to three power from your leader sheet. So maybe I want to use that power. So... Now we choose who we're going to put forward, so I'm going to put Shireen as my character. And now uh, House Tyrell decides who they're going to put. And what, what do they have? And then the 8 is their highest, and then they got this Marjorie. Let's see what she can do. After the encounter phase, if your side lost, choose a supporting player on the opposing side. Yeah, that's not too good. I'd say let's just go ahead and put Loris forward as our defender. And my special power is before house cards are placed face down, if you're an active player, choose another player on your side. That player plays the face down card instead of you. So now we go to the support phase. So let's just say the Starks decide, um, yes, we, we'd like to su support uh, the Baratheons. And the Baratheons say, okay, I'll, I'll accept your support. So then they choose a character to put forward. So let's say they're going to put uh, Bran forward. And they go toward the Challenger side since they're joining the Challenger. And then you go over here to the Targaryens and they say, no, I don't want to support anybody. And we'll say uh, the Lannisters say, yeah, I'll, I'll support you, support the Tyrells if they accept. And they say, yeah, we'll accept your support. So they go ahead and put uh, old Joffrey forward. Now House Baratheon does have a truce card so they can try to say, um, hey, let's do a truce. Um, and you know Tyrell they don't have a truce card but they could bluff and say they do to try to get the Baratheons to play a truce so they would automatically win but they just say no you know because they think they're going to win since they got uh, the power over here and they think they have a good amount of power here so they say, no, no truce. So we're going to go ahead with hostility. So before we're going to play this, since we use Shireen, we can play this first. Before house cards are placed face, ta face down, distribute up to three power from your sheet. So that goes in my discard pile. And I go ahead and take these three power, and I'm going to put it on Shireen. Now I still got to choose my card, which I don't have anything very good, but I'm going to play it too. Now of course you don't reveal it till both players um, choose what they're going to use. So, uh, old Mace, he had an 8, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. It's hard to do this with one hand. So both players would put their cards forward, face down, and then reveal. All right, eight, two. Then you add up the total. So we got uh, two, and we got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oops, plus Bran over here, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we got a total of 13, and he's got eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 so we don't need to even count anymore because we know you know Joffrey's gonna put it way above 13 so uh, the defender wins again so since the defender wins each side gets to draw two cards and since Lannister joined they get to draw two cards also now remember these wouldn't be face up I'd, I'm just doing them face up so it's easy for me to tell what they have. Obviously, in a real game, you'd be holding your hand to cards or you'd have them face down. 
or they also get to distribute uh, two power from their sheet so we'll just say he's going to put some there and some there and uh, he only has one power left on his sheet but we'll just say he's going to put that on Joffrey also try to get a real powerful character there now because um, Stark and Baratheon both lost they got to lose half their power so what did we have here one two three four five six seven so we got to lose four and that goes back onto my sheet and Bran he had one two three four so he loses two And now the active player on the winning side, which is Tyrell, gets to choose one hostage, either from Baratheon. He can take it from either side, so he'll take a hostage, a hostage from Baratheon. And let's just say he wants to take a random card from his hand. He doesn't know what he's getting, but he takes that, puts it in his hostage area. And let's see what he got. Alright, everybody puts their characters back to uh, normal. Make sure they got five cards. I think Baratheon does not, so he's got to draw two. I think everybody else does. Well, he didn't get to play any. He's got way more than five. There's no hand limit. So that'll do it. So now we go to the next round where it's now the Lannisters' turn to be the challenger. So they're going to... Well, first, before that, at the start of a turn, any turn you can release or torment hostages. So uh, old Mace, he says he's going to torment this hostage. So he's... She goes to the discard pile of the Brathian player, and old Celise is going to lose four power. One, two, three, four. So that's going to kill her. But that does go back over here to his sheet. And what I should have done, I forgot to use his power to let him choose the challenger. But, oh well, too late now. Since we're still at the start of the turn, he's going to go ahead and torment his hostage. And uh, so, got to lose four power off of old Rob Stark's leader sheet here. And that just goes back in the box. Alright, so we're finally at Lannister here. We're going to decide who he's going against. He's going against Stark. Man, Stark's not getting a break. Alright. <clears throat> so, so each active player gets to draw a card and distribute one power. So he gets to draw a card. And he doesn't have any power left on his leader sheet to distribute. Then we go to support. So we go to Tyrell and say, do you want to support? And he says, yeah, you know what? I'm going to support. I'll support with... Uh, Renly. Well, actually, first, uh, they're supposed to choose the characters they're going to fight with. And he's going to use Joffrey. And uh, Stark is going to use Eddard. Oh, he got to go to the defender side. But now, <clears throat> yeah, Tyrell says, yes, I'll join you, Lannister. And support you and Baratheon says uh, you know what I'll support you Stark let's stick together so he chooses Davos and uh, Targaryen um, he says no uh, I'm staying out again I'm gonna stay neutral so let's look at what we got here let me look and I'll come back with what they choose well, old Lannister's going to use his cunning power, and uh, so before house cards are revealed, he's going to say the values of each revealed hostility card is negative, but Stark doesn't know for sure he's going to use that, but since he's going to do that, he's going to play his one 
So he chooses that card to play. And uh, of course, it, again, it would be face down until the cards are revealed. Now Stark over here, he knows that guy's got that power. So he's not sure, is he going to use it or is he going to play a high card? I'm not sure. But I think he's going to use it. So what I'm going to do is play Bran and that'll be a zero. It'll count as a zero. So flip cards over and it's revealed that I played a, a warg and that'll count as a as a zero and it's revealed that I played a one but since Tyrion is my leader I can play a card with him on it and I'm gonna play this after house cards are revealed choose one active player that revealed a hostility card if that player has a higher value hostility card in their hand they discard the revealed card and replace it with a higher valued card so now, old Stark's got to play a higher value card than the zero. Well, let's see what he has. He still wants to play his lowest, but he doesn't have a a really low one. So he's got to pay a, play a five, which that's going to be no good because that's a negative five. So now we total four, negative five, so it's negative one. So that'll make zero, one two three four so my total is only four and Lannister they've got negative one so that's zero one two three four five so they won no doubt because they hadn't even gotten to counting Tyrell yet so now since they were that the challenger here they both get to spread a hostility over to Stark. So Lannister gets to put one over on Stark and Tyrell has to put, gets to put one over on Stark. And back here, because Rob lost, Eddard's got to lose half of his power. And because Baratheon supported and lost, he's got to lose half of his. Round it up, so he loses three. And then, of course, and of course, uh, he gets to take a hostage from either Baratheon or Stark, and he decides he's going to take the top card off of Baratheon. He just gets a hostility card. Okay, so now we just do the end of turn stuff, put everybody's characters back. Make sure everybody has five cards. Let me see. Three, four, five. Well, he didn't play one in. So Stark's got to get one. And I know he's got way more than five. So, all right. And then we go to Targaryen. He hasn't been involved yet. But since it started his turn, uh, old. Uh, Lannister says he wants to torment this hostage. So he puts a card in Baratheon discard pile and he gets to remove one power from one character. So did that, took it from Davos. All right, so now we go Targaryen. He sees who he's going against. It's Tyrell. Let's get a card. I've got his flipped over the right way, but I'm going to flip them over this way so I'll be able to see what they are. They each get to put a power. So he'll put his there. He still has one. He's going to go ahead and put it on Renly. And now we'll, we go for support, going this way. And everybody says, no, I'm not supporting you since you haven't supported any of us. So he's on his own, and uh, well, again, first I forgot, you know, he's got to choose what character he's going to um, challenge with, so he's going to choose uh, 
I don't know how you say that, Dorea and old uh, Tyrell here, he's going to defend with Renly. And then uh, now we would ask for support and everybody says no support. So old Targaryen says, you know, he's got a truce card, so he says, hey, why don't we just do a truce? You know, I haven't done anything against you. And uh, since Tyrell here has a truce card, uh, you know, he kind of agrees and says, yeah. So he could fake him out and say he's going to play a truce card um, and then not and win. But we'll just say, just to show how it works, we'll say, yes, they both play a truce card, reveal it, and, and it's a truce. So, so remember, these are the things they could do um, to, you know, discuss and decide upon if they have a truce. Um, you know, one person could get all of these, or one person could get one, or the other one's none. They just have to decide. But we'll just say they came to a decision that they both are going to spread one influence token. So Targaryen gets to put one over here on Tyrell, and Tyrell gets to put one over here on Targaryen. And uh, then you'd clean up again and come back to Rob Stark. And so that's how it goes round and round until one person has all their influence um, spread or until one character has all their characters killed off and then whoever has the highest or the most influence spread is the winner. So that's uh, Game of Thrones, the Iron Throne. And if you've ever played Cosmic Encounter... This is a lot like that. I mean, it's pretty much, <laughs> pretty much taken directly from it, only with the Game of Thrones theme put out, put on there instead of the uh, space theme of uh, with the different alien races of Cosmic Encounter. Now, I, I actually own Cosmic Encounter, but I've only played it one time. Um, so, and that was a couple of years ago. So. I, I didn't remember exactly how it played, but when I read the rules for this, I was like, oh yeah, that that's a lot. That reminds me a lot of uh, my one play of Cosmic Encounter. So, of course, I played this solo, so <laughs> you can't get the full experience because you know what everybody has, and um, so you can't really do the... We the, the whole point of this game is wheeling and dealing and bargaining and trying to... and betraying, and that's where all the fun would come in, but... Um, I, I really liked this series, and I think the way it was implemented here into this uh, re-theme of Cosmic Encounter, I think it works pretty well, and I think I would uh, enjoy playing this with some buddies of mine, getting together, you know, with at least four or five people. I don't think it would be fun with less than four, but uh, if you have at least four people, I think it'll be... Uh, you know, a good time. So I plan on trying to, once Corona is over, I plan on uh, trying to get this played with some friends of mine. Anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed and thank for thanks for watching.